From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Uh, this evening I want to talk a few minutes about uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Basically, I want to talk about uh, the diagnostic tests and the differential diagnosis. You see, there are two things in diagnosis, anti-CCP antibodies and rheumatoid factor. Rheumatoid factor is IgM antibody that is directed against the FC segment of IgG. And uh, you see, if you combine both of them, you will have a high sensitivity and specificity. And anti-CC antibodies, they are the most specific blood test. Their specificity ranges like 95%. But rheumatoid factor, you will see it in other diseases like hepatitis C and syphilis and uh, subacute bacterial endocarditis, tuberculosis. And sometimes with advancing age, you will see rheumatoid factor positivity even in uh, healthy people. So uh, those two tests, anti-CCP, anti-CCP is most sensitive and most specific, okay? So it is most sensitive and most specific, anti-CCP. So don't get fooled if you see rheumatoid factor and take it as the most important test for rheumatoid uh, arthritis. Don't let, let not the names deceive you, folks. So choose anti-CCP. It has more sensitivity and most specificity. And also, the other tests are ESR gets raised and uh, C-reactive protein gets raised in these people. And if you see radiological tests, there will be joint erosion, joint space narrowing, and uh, there is a periarticular osteoporosis. Those are the important things in diagnostic tests. Of all the laboratory tests, so X-ray changes are the most specific, okay? So X-ray changes are most specific. Because even in early disease, like in the first six months, if you look at these wrists and feet, you will see joint swelling and extraarticular articular demineralization. And uh, these, the, the joint space also, it gets narrowed. And you will see the erosion of the ulnar styloid process and uh, the bony surfaces. So those are the very important uh, things you need to remember. And if you, as I said, rheumatoid arthritis, it involves the neck. So you will see that uh, cervical vertebral uh, osteoporosis and the joint space narrowing if you take a CT scan of the cervical spine. So those are the important things you need to remember in the diagnostic uh, test. Basically, anti-CCP, rheumatoid factor, ESR, C-reactive protein. Now, let us talk about differential diagnosis. The most important thing is osteoarthritis. See, osteoarthritis, it spares the wrist joint, it spares the metacarpophalangeal joints, it involves the distal proximal interphalangeal, uh, sorry, distal interphalangeal joints, okay? And uh, it does not have morning stiffness. So th those are the important things. Then gout. Gout starts as a monoarticular intermittent disease. They will have one joint like big toe. And it can become polyarticular in, with time. And they will also have these gouty tophi. They resemble rheumatoid nodules. But always ask for the history, the intermittent monoarthritis. And if you examine the synovium, you will see the urate crystals. Then Lyme disease. Lyme disease usually one joint, most commonly the knee joint. And you will also see Lyme titer positive. Then human parvovirus B19. Human parvovirus B19, it can mimic early rheumatoid arthritis and uh, it causes arthralgias, which are temporary. And also there will be rash on cheeks and extremities. There will be IgM antibodies against uh, the parvovirus B19, okay? 
then hepatitis C. Hepatitis C, you see the interesting thing. They will have positive rheumatoid factor and polyarthritis, but it is still not rheumatoid arthritis. Remember those points, folks. Then systemic lopus erythematosus. These patients come with malar rash and butterfly rash, and uh, also they will have antibodies to double stranded DNA and glomerulonephritis. Then polymyalgia rheumatica. It affects people above 50 years and it will have proximal muscle weakness and stiffness and it affects the shoulder problems. If they raise their hand, it causes pain in their arms and uh, they will have hip girdle pain. So that's about polymyalgia rheumatica. Then comes rheumatic fever. It will be like migratory. They will have erythema marginatum. They will have antibodies to anti you know, and uh, those are the important things, okay? And the other thing is pra paraneoplastic syndromes sometimes cause polyarthritis that resemble rheumatoid arthritis. In patients with ovarian carcinoma sometimes, they will have polyarthritis. You wonder what is going on? They develop a paraneoplastic syndrome to ovarian cancer. So, Always think about differential diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. It comes with osteoarthritis, gout, and uh, SLE, and uh, polymyalgia rheumatica, Lyme disease, human parvovirus B19, and paraneoplastic syndromes. So those are Browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 clinical skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.